So we're just looking at the force uh, on the weight here. Then what we had uh, force which equals it's a hundred hundred grams, okay, or point one of a kilo multiplied by ten. So I'll say it's one newton down that. What the scale is showing you is the normal force from the floor back onto the body sitting on top. It doesn't, I mean, the fact that uh, it's exerting a force upwards onto that, which when you're weighing things on your kitchen bench or on your bathroom floor, such as yourself, you're putting down there, it's typically the same force that's pushing down from the mass, from the force from your body, which you want to ascertain to whether, like me, you're a bit of a tubby, or weighing out so many grams of butter or whatever it is you're doing, then that force pushing up is going to be the same as the force pushing down. It's only when we start accelerating the uh, framework that we're standing in that these are going to get different. So in this case, what we have here is that we accelerate up in that direction. So it looked like there was a force, there was a, uh, it looked, said that there was a mass of uh, 110 grams. So force is equal to 1.1 newtons, I'll put that by 10 for instance. And what we have here is that we have a net force now of equal to 0.1 newtons in the upward direction, which we would expect because we're accelerating upwards. Okay. So, we're accelerating upwards. Uh, what we should be able to do, I'm just trying to think if we can actually do it, we should be able to work out how fast we're actually accelerating. The net force, if the object was uh, accelerating at 0.1 equals mass times acceleration. 0.1 equals, and what do we say that was? 0.1 times A. So divide 3, so A is equal to 1 second squared. So that's what we're going to get. So that's 
So the acceleration that the lift was experiencing at that time was about one metre per second uh, in an upward direction. For the first little bit. Okay. And we saw that because when we were at the base, okay, we saw it jump up to 110 grams. When we're about midway, we could actually see that it was back to 100 grams. Why was it back to 100 grams? It wasn't accelerating. It wasn't accelerating. So if it wasn't accelerating, it was travelling at a constant velocity. And if it's travelling at a constant velocity, we know from Newton's first law that there's no external unbalanced force acting upon it. And when we get to the top, we found that it was jumped back down to about 90 grams. What does that suggest? What do you reckon, Tony? Um, that it was decelerating. Decelerating. Or accelerating in which direction? Um, it was running down. Yeah. So there's a net force acting down. And because it jumps down by the same amount, you'd expect it to be decelerating at, decelerating at about one metre per second. Okay. It's pretty. Um, I think that works pretty well as a demonstration. Uh, it's showing that the when your uh, field of reference is accelerating, that the normal force and the gravitational force in this case are going to be different. So that you can actually add those forces up. And they will show that there is a net force acting upon it. And you would suggest that that was going to be the case if you are accelerating at that time. Has to be according to Newton's second law. Any questions on that? All right. Uh, let's go down to the next one. It's gone. So, again, we're having a look at the situation that we looked at the other day, the terminal velocity. If you jump out of a perfectly good plane, then you're going to start accelerating uh, due to your unbalanced force of gravity uh, at the force is equal to m times g. As you increase your speed, then the idea of the drag forces are uh, resistive forces acting upon you are going to increase because those resistive forces as you fall through the air are dependent on the velocity at which you're speaking, uh, speaking the velocity at which you're travelling the surface area of the body and the viscosity of what you're falling through so as your velocity increases that drag force increases until you get to such a stage that the drag force is equal to the uh, gravity force and you are going to be uh, travelling at a constant velocity terminal velocity very turned on for you to drink. So, similarly, if you have a look at the idea of inclined planes, we've already seen this uh, with the, practice, the last practice you did. Okay, we ran the gliders down the inclined plane. Okay, that's not going to be travelling at the rate at which uh, you drop a ball, so it's not going to accelerate at 9.81. And you know that as the steeper of the slope goes down, and any of you uh, who used to have a billy car as a kid would know that the steeper the hill, the more rapidly you're going to go down the hill. Okay. So what we have here is if we have a billy car here, and the billy car is sitting there, and we know that the gravity force acting upon the, um, the billy car is going to be going straight down. Now, looking at the components of that, well, there's going to be a uh, bit of car going straight back down, and we're going to have the uh, force, the normal force, is coming at right angles to the slope that we have like that. So, for instance, if we have a 
perfectly good slate. I'll put that on there like that. Then the force down is equal to the normal force acting upon it. It's not going to go anywhere. If I tilt that like that, then the normal force is now acting at uh, right angles to the slope, but the gravitational force is still acting straight down. Okay. Now, what can you tell me about the forces acting on that case at the moment? They're equal. They're all balanced. How do you know that? That's right. How do you know that? Because it's not moving, it's stationary. It's stationary, it's not accelerating. So there must be some other magical third force on there. Friction. And that friction is working up the slope. So what we would have in this case is we have the force of the glasses case due to gravity down. We have the normal force of the of the uh, going back through uh, from the at right angles to the slope. So if you draw a little force diagram, we have one that comes down through there, comes back up through that. And in order to complete that diagram, there must be some force that has forced due to gravity, forced due to normal. That's going to be a right angle in there. There is a force of friction connecting that back up there so that the uh, so that there's no tension through there. So that there's no net acceleration through there. If, on the other hand, I take something that doesn't have as much friction and I put that on there, it's going to sit down there. In other words, if there's no friction, what we end up with is our force diagram starts there, goes down to there, comes back up to there. And so we have a net force, or the sum of our forces, is going in that direction with that magnitude. So what we have is force going that direction in that magnitude. So, and that's parallel to the slope. And the steeper that is, no, it's probably not. If I come down there at that slope there, that's still a right angle. That uh, normal force, that angle is opening up. That's still a right angle. What's happening is that it's still parallel to the uh, still parallel to the slope, but it's getting to be longer. So there's more force involved. In other words, if we have a slope here of angle theta, then if we brought that uh, down to there, then that would be a right angle. If that's a right angle. And that, in right, that angle in there is 90 minus theta. Now, we know that that angle in there is 90 degrees because uh, that normal force <coughs> is acting at right angles to that. If that's 90 degrees and that is 90 minus theta, then that angle in there has to be theta. So that's what we have there. So, when you're drawing your force diagrams, you've got your component here of your weight that is, is the component of the weight that is perpendicular to the slope, which is going to be equal to the normal force, and there's going to be the component of the weight that is parallel to the slope, that is going to be, in this case, if there's no friction, the net force that's pulling it down the slope. If this is stationary, then that perpendicular that perpendicular uh, component is going to be equal to the friction that's holding it up the slope. And that is, friction is going to be along the slope there. So in this case, a uh, simplified diagram of forces acting on a car rolling down a hill. Is that one? <coughs> so it's rolling down a hill. You've got a component that's weight in this direction. You've got the normal direction, normal uh, reaction force at right angles to the slope, and there's some sort of road friction on there. If it's got the handbrake on, 
then this is going to be sufficient such that when you draw that vector diagram completely, it's going to complete all up because it's going to be stationary. If it hasn't, then that's going to be released. There's going to be a net force, which means a net acceleration, which means untold damage and a new Amy ad down at the bottom of the hill. Right and your components of weight here, you can see that this is the, uh, if you've got your components of weight, by working that out, you, that is going to be equal and opposite to the normal reaction force, and that component of weight is going to be equal to the uh, net force that's pulling it down. So, in order to work out a problem like this, a car of mass 1600 kilograms is parked on a steep and rough road, begins to roll down the hill. After a short while, it reaches a constant speed. The road is inclined at 15 degrees to the horizontal. The speed is sufficiently slow that the air resistance is even significant and can be ignored. Determine the magnitude of road friction on the car while it's rolling along. So, if it's 15 degrees, then that angle in there between the, the normal reaction component and the weight is going to be 15 degrees and the magnitude of the road friction is going to be at that angle in there. So, in other words, if we're looking here, we've got our triangle such that we've got force of gravity, we've got uh, force of, in, what do they call it, the magnitude of normal reaction force, no, I'll call it force of normal, and there is going to be a net magnitude of the road friction is going to be force of gravity is, because that is going to be equal to uh, 1600 times, what have they gone with? That must be, yeah, okay, I said 10 newtons per kilogram, uh, and multiply that by, so work out what that is, we have that, we work out what that friction is. And it turns out to be, substituting in that, that we get 4.1 by 10 to the 3 newtons, or let's say 41,000 newtons, 41 kilonewtons. Some examples of inclined planes, you actually get canals where you have to go up a hill. So I actually put a big slab of water and they have uh, cantilevered, cantilevered uh, locks going up and down. They move those up and down and slide them up a hill, get those throughout Europe or parts of Europe. I often wonder, every, every year I look at that and I think, I'm not quite sure what that is. Every year I think, I must find a better example and every year I forget. Or you can have uh, this example of the old fin uh, funiculars. Uh, in America somewhere else, but it's very similar to the one that I travelled on when I was in Barcelona. They just got one car coming down attached to a hill. They've got a big basin, a big pulley up here with uh, one at the top, one at the bottom. They just keep rolling them backwards and forwards. Other examples of inclined planes that make you uh, getting up hills a bit easier, so rather than going straight up. If you, increase the, if you increase the length, you can decrease the slope, so it makes it a bit easier for your car to get up. And if you've been up Jacob's Ladder or Ben Lowe, you know all about that. Or indeed, Mount Nelson. Okay, so let's have a little look here. Let's go back through some of the questions. We've got chapter 4, 28, 34, 35, 37, 40. What else have we seen?
clear out line your text anyway. And you can have a crack at set 14 in Gardner as well. Alright, go through and have a crack at some of those.